Hello beautiful soul family. Welcome back to Light Language with Nubia. If you're new to my YouTube channel, welcome. And if you are an established member here, welcome back. I'm sending you so much love from my heart to your heart. Today I have the honor of and privilege to be sharing um, the story of our great soul sister Debbie Hannah who was recently impacted by a health condition which she had to be hospitalized she had a triple heart bypass and phenomenal experiences have been experienced while her stay in the hospital. Our other soul sister, Tina, had the honor to communicate with her and record her amazing experiences that are happening as she's having the different heart surgeries and her recovery in the hospital at this moment. We would like to share that with everyone that is in our light community. So you are aware of what's going on beyond our existence here in earth. So take a couple minutes to find a comfortable space and open your hearts to all the beautiful messages we will be listening through our soul sister debbie hannah okay this is debbie hannah we're recording what has happened to her in her experience okay go on deb okay so this is just a little bite that uh, I don't really want to start over again. But anyway, everybody that was praying for me all around the globe, people I had no idea I even knew, um, I went to those places. I touched those people. I walked the street. Maybe not in this lifetime, but in some lifetime, I was, went to ancient civilizations. I went to future civilizations. I knew that I was in the fifth dimension, heading through into the seventh, bypassing the sixth, and maybe even into the ninth. I was getting the ninth too. I ended up on a some kind of a planet that had virtual people that were working on me. And what was interesting about that is I was laying on the table and this young, beautiful young lady come walking in that was pretty tight space. I'm walking in, stood at my shoulder and I looked up at her and she looked human. She had real soft skin and black curly hair and almond eyes. She was real pretty. And then all of a sudden she went plastic. Her hair was plastic, her face was plastic, and I could only see from her shoulders up. And then when she was done, she would pat my arm or whatever and say, I'll be back. You're fine, don't worry, I'll be back. And when she would walk past me, I could see through her. I couldn't find her any longer until she got to a certain point, and then there she would reappear again. That was very interesting. There's two of them that did that. But they were working pretty hard on me too. And I'm not sure what planet that was on because that was actually the day that I woke up for a little bit. Well, I, I know that Nelson put you in a chamber of healing. And uh -huh. I know 
several, several sisters and brothers were working on you. Crazy amount. Mm -hmm. This was absolutely, I made a little video and tried to post it on Facebook and it's really dark and you can hardly hear it. But I did that the night after I woke up. Because when I got on my Facebook, my kids kept saying, Mom, people need to hear something from you. And there were thousands of people. And I remember feeling that night, and I didn't stay alive at that point yet. But I was awake, and uh, anyway, I remember thinking how blessed I felt to even be in the presence of humans. Just to be in their presence. We've lost sight of who we are. It's magnificent. And we don't even know it. Mm -hmm. we've, lost, we've lost sight of it. And I remember thinking how thankful I was that I got to experience the realms that I had been to so far. And that they were so attentive to me. And who am I? I'm, I'm nobody, you know, but truth be known, we are all someone. Mm -hmm. We're not just a skin suit like we think we are. We're not. We're experiencers. We're adventurers. We're explorers. We're lovers. We're guides. We're friends. We're, you know, we have lots of emotions. We forget who we are. You know, and we forgot the power of words, the power of prayer. You know, that prayer is a big deal. That's a you could imagine all the prayers that people did. The power of prayer is what got you through this. I feel, yeah, oh, yeah. Anyway. Tell the story that you were talking about how you saw yourself in surgery and you went and laid on your, you felt like you were on your side, but you went out were on your stomach and you can see. Okay. So what happened was when I very first went to the heart doctor that day, basically what he was going to do is just put a camera into me and take a picture and see if I was opened up inside my heart or if I had the problems that needed to be fixed with stents or whatever. Well, I got in the operating room. It's really not very big of a deal anymore. You basically just put this little camera through your artery and flip it into your heart. Well, when I, <laughs> I laid down, they gave me the anesthetic and I didn't go to sleep. I stayed awake, but my whole body was paralyzed. And I was trying to wiggle my nose, wiggle my finger, anything to let them know that I wasn't asleep. I could feel this. Okay, I just couldn't move. Anyway, so in a little bit, I was getting pretty terrified because I wasn't sure what kind of pain I was going to be in. But in a, just a few minutes, you know, it, it kind of started getting people in there with me. But what they were showing me is that you have to flip yourself. You have to flip yourself upside down. Or spin yourself around. Not long ways, but sideways. Like you're rolling up in a blanket, kind of. But what you're doing when you do that is you're giving yourself an opportunity to break free from the body, from inside the body, and at that point, when you're upside down, instead of witnessing what you think the outer world is, or, oh my God, I'm paralyzed. They don't know I'm paralyzed. Look at what's happening to me, okay? Instead of that, and trying to get someone's attention, when you flip upside down or around, and you're more on your tummy and your knees, okay, than laying on your back looking up and out, you realize that you have just, um, you know, 
gotten yourself free from the physical body. And it doesn't mean you're dying. It doesn't mean that any of that stuff. You can reattach just as easily as you unattached. But what you can accomplish when you're in that state is complete healing. Because you're looking at the world from the right way, the right direction. You know, you're not looking at the world from the outside in. You're not really even looking at the world from the inside out. You're looking at the world from inside your womb, your egg, you know, your your soul. And from in there, you can accomplish anything. And there's never a desire with that accomplishment. It just happens. It's not like you say, oh my gosh, I'm afraid. I woke up and nobody knows I'm awake in here. And all of that, all that panic doesn't exist. It's, it's pretend. It's what has captured our attention in this world. And we have yet to be released from it. We're trying now. We're trying. But at the rate we're going, we're going, we're moving. It feels like super fast, but it's not. From out there time, it's not fast at all. You know, so we have to learn, you know, how to, it's almost like you've, you've ever boiled an egg. It's almost like getting the shell off without cracking it. And that boiled egg inside, you can spin it around inside the shell, but it doesn't crack the shell. Mm-hmm. You see what I'm saying? It's really mm-hmm. kind of hard for me to explain. Mm-hmm. It's almost, anyway, that's an interesting concept to me. It's almost like poking a hole in the shell. You get that hole. Almost. And almost you're releasing you it. You're releasing your part of your body out of that egg. You, it feels like that, but you're not. Mm-hmm. Your, your egg remains completely whole unto itself. I have another you question. Do. Sarah McKeezadek felt like she had to um, get your contract re-signed. Do you think that happened when you were... I'll tell you, it's possible because I was completely unresponsive for, I don't know, I'd have to make sure again because I'm a little confused on time. But it seemed like for five full days I was unresponsive. And then all of a sudden, my son came in that morning. They didn't leave my side. They stayed there all the time. But he went and told everybody, he goes, mom came to me this morning and said that she was waking up. And he walked in and I remember him putting his hand on my shoulder and he goes, hi. When I opened my eyes, I went, well, hello. Hi. Was that Randy? Yeah. And Mm -hmm. he went running back and told everybody, mom's awake, mom's awake. So, you know, I know somebody... And it very well could have been her, or it could have been me, or it could have been, you know, I fully don't, be- I don't fully believe that someone else has control of me. Mm-mm. I feel like I have control of myself. You did. You did. But, you did. But I do feel like that I can be boosted with energy in certain ways. Mm-hmm. Okay. So I know my kids were praying that I wouldn't die, mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, obviously. And my husband and what have you, and my friends and you know, all of you out there sent your blessings and and whatever. And that's what carried me through. That's what kept me alive while I was dead. I was telling everybody you appreciated it. That's why I got and went on to tell everybody that you said thank you because you knew you felt it. I knew you felt us. You could Mm -hmm. feel our energy. You could feel us thinking about you. You knew it. Yes. Mm Mm-hmm. I could feel everybody. That's so when, good. When I came awake, for only one day, I was awake, and then I had to be put back on a ventilator again. But for that day, I had some incredible experiences, and I knew that I was about to go witness some more people and behold them, love them into their new energy in their new future and you know that sort of thing and the people were going to be having a little bit of a hard time of it 
and not like I'm not either. I mean, you know, but regardless of any of that, I knew that I was going to be traveling to see each and every person that ever prayed for me. Mm-hmm. And I will tell you that it wasn't all individual. There are groups mm-hmm. that came to this planet that those who pray together, play together. Mm-hmm. Those who play together, pray together. Okay, so it represents one big morphic field. But it's many, 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 many people work through there. Okay? So it's been very interesting, and I could go on for a long time about a lot of this. I need to get it down. Hopefully I can find someone that will help me put it into print. I do want to get it out. Every day I get a little bit more and more. I remember more and more. Um... I ended up having, but we will get this out because this is a story that people need to hear. Yeah, and I agree. And it's not just it's not just because I've seen it. It's not because I experienced it. It's because it's time. You know, it's time. And I'm not the only person that ever died that came back. I won't be the last. Mm-mm. You know, I won't be the only one ever. You know, it's just that this is what I got. Yeah, and didn't you and have uh, two it, two heart attacks? Go ahead. Didn't you have two heart attacks? Yes, three. Three. One major one. Wow. I have never heard of anybody going through the stuff you're going through and they come out of it. Me neither. That's how I know that the presence is real. That's how I know when I can smell a rose. Or uh, what I was actually seeing were violet, beautiful, huge violet flowers. Okay, and the, and the most wonderful, fabulous scent waved it from these flowers that you just can't even imagine just incredible but I, I will keep talking to you again about this stuff I get real short of breath I guess you can tell mm-hmm. and I'm still in recovery and I have to be real real careful right now so I'm kind of working on myself too and uh, I appreciate any thoughts and prayers of course I really don't want the manipulation but mm-hmm. I would appreciate you lending me the energy mm-hmm. that I might need mm-hmm. at some point Mm-hmm. You know? Definitely. I don't want people praying for a specific outcome, I guess is what I'm saying. Because then they're going to not believe in prayer if something different happens. But I would love to be, you know, thought of and believe me, I will send your blessings back. So, here's a couple things I just wanted to talk to Tina about real quick. Oh, want me to shut this off? After hearing this beautiful experiences being experienced currently right now in the hospital as our soul sister Debbie Hannah is in critical care at the moment, take a couple deep breaths in to inhale and let your heart process all this information so you can start awakening to the reality of who you are, who who you are really in this universe, in this matrix that we're in. Take a deep breath in. Exhale. Thank you for allowing this sacred space for our soul sister to share her experience. This is Light Language with Nubia, and I am sending you infinite love from my heart to your heart. And I will see you next time for another beautiful transmission that will take you to your highest light path here now.